everyone. Welcome to Art Days. I want to talk to you about a really interesting artist who lived very, very long ago. His name is Giuseppe Acrambaldo, and he did the most unusual style of painting. He was a portrait painter and a very skilled and talented artist, but his style was over the top, even way back when he lived, which was in the early 1500s. So I wanna show you and talk to you a little bit about him. His style of painting, he would do portraits that were done in a profile pose. Now a profile pose is when your head is turned to the side and you see the side. But he also did some that were also a forward facing profile. So I thought that I would show you some examples of his work. His style was so unusual. Instead of painting in realistic eyes, a realistic nose, and other facial features that you would expect in a hand-painted portrait, he painted people with their features as vegetables and fruit and different types of things in the environment. His style of paintings and the ones that are around that we can see represent different seasons of the year, like spring, summer, fall, and winter. But he also did some very outstanding work on the elements of the environment, which is water, air, fire, and earth. So earth, water, fire, and air. He also did some things with those elements as well. So I have a picture of one of his portraits that he did. This is a side profile picture. And as you can see, everything in here on this portrait is represented with vegetables. This is the title of this picture is Summer. And it was done in 1572. As you can see on the face, he has little tomatoes, he has a cucumber, all types of fruit, he has grapes, he has garlic cloves. His, the whole outfit that the person is wearing is done with little strands of wheat and straw growing in the field. I love this artist. So today I want to show you how we can do a portrait sort of similar to the style of Acrobaldo and also reuse some things that would normally be thrown away. Okay, so I'd like to show you the, an example of an Acrambaldo portrait that I did. Now my portrait is a, fa a forward facing portrait, it's not a profile. And instead of actually drawing and painting all of the different uh, features such as the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and things like that, I was able to find all these wonderful pictures of fruits and vegetables in the newspapers that you see in the grocery store. So we spent a lot of time cutting these things out with a pair of scissors and just cut out a bunch of different things, all different colors, all different types of flowers and fruits and vegetables. And this is how I put my picture together using cutouts from the newspapers, a glue stick, pair of scissors, and in your kit, you're going to be getting a, a sheet of pretty paper with a border on it, and you're also going to be getting a little template to help you get to draw the head and the shoulders on your paper. So the way that you would do that is hold this down, and with your pencil, you're going to trace 
around and stop here at the edge because you have a, you already have a border on your paper of flowers. Then when you lift this up, this will be the area that you will work in and then just do your inside line. We've talked about our inside lines before to make the chin. Okay, so these type of portraits, they really take a lot of thought to do this because you need to look around and see what reminds you of what. Such as if you can find pictures of green beans or things like this, green beans could be hair. Little flowers with a dark center could be eyes. This is a, a green pepper, like a jalapeno pepper. This is sort of in the shape of a nose. So when you're looking around through your cuttings, think about how you can arrange these to make the face features that you need for one of these portraits. So you're gonna need something for hair, you're gonna need eyes, you're gonna need nose, you're gonna need a mouth. Then you can start filling in with little decorative things that you could use to represent clothing and jewelry maybe, like here's some earrings hanging down, here's the neck, here's the shoulders. This is all using your imagination and what you can do with these beautiful color pictures that are in advertisements that you see every day. I also cut some flowers out of a seed catalog and made a border for this picture. Your picture already has a, has a border on it, but I wanted to make one for this one's a little bit bigger than this. And then after you get all of your face features in, you can start adding some decorative things to make it pretty. I thought, well, this is a, this is a girl with some long green bean hair and some Swiss chard hair on this side. So I think I'll put a, cut out a flower and make a decoration for her hair and then put it all together using my glue stick. It does take a while to put these pictures together. You really do have to think about it. And we've been making pictures on vegetables for many years. How many of you have ever done this before where you would decorate a pumpkin for Halloween? That's the funnest thing to do. So we've decorated and painted pumpkins. We've carved out pumpkins. So vegetables have been an art form for lots of us for lots of different reasons. So I'm ready to start now with my portrait. The way I did this one is I, I wanted to make a background for the face instead of just leaving it plain white paper. Now there's several ways you can approach this. You can take your crayons if you want and color a nice background if you wanna do that. Or if you wanna use some tan color brown or tan color vegetables to fill in your face, that would be more Akron Baldo for sure. So what I found is in my cuttings, I found some, these are sort of neutral colors of some honeydew melons and cantaloupes. So I'm gonna fit these in. Here's a big piece of cantaloupe. So I'm gonna lay these out, lay them out first and see how they fit in. And remember, you just fill in in the middle part because around here you're gonna be having hair and all kinds of other things. So this, this fills in pretty good. And that's a pretty neutral color. It's between brown and tan, so that'll work. So I'm gonna take all that off and get my glue stick out, crank it up a little bit, put a little bit of glue. Doesn't take much to hold these magazine clippings down. Okay, and just press it down. Okay, now I have the face all glued down and uh, it's pretty representative of a face. It's sort of, sort of like an oval shape. So now I need to start thinking about the eyes, nose, and the mouth. 
So I'm looking through my collection of cuttings and I see all kinds of things I could use. Like I found these, these little groups of limes. I like that. I found a couple of cucumbers here. That's sort of cool looking. And it covers up a little white spot that I left. Here's some red potatoes and some sweet potatoes. Look how that forms the mouth. Isn't that neat? Now, if you wanted to get really fancy, you could do overlap some vegetables. This would be like eyes, flower eyes with green eye makeup on. So this is my wild imagination working. And you can have a wild imagination too while you're doing this. It does take a little time to sort through things and get things out that you like. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down and then I'll show you how to make some hair. Okay, I've glued down the eyes with their green eye makeup on. And a nice cucumber nose and a red potato and a nice brown potato lips. This is starting to turn into a face. Can you see that? I certainly can. Think about some hair. And I like to use, uh, for hair, I like to use really colorful things like grapes. I have to look what inspires you to work with this. And there's plenty of inspiration in your kit when you get it. You will have a, you'll have a bunch of vegetables cut out and pretty piece of paper to work with. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with some grapes first. And the way these happen to be cut out, it already had a curve. That's why look for things that seem to fit along with the shape of your face. This was a, when, it, when I cut it out, it already had a curve there. There must've been a plate or something in the newspaper that I didn't want to keep, so this is the same thing. So you can lay these out and you can look at it first, lay it out, see how you would like it. It's okay if it extends onto the border of your paper. That even that makes it more interesting. And let's see if we can make that hair a little bit longer. I'll tuck it. If you have a little edge of your paper, you can tuck it underneath. And then, let's see what I've got over here for another part. Maybe, oh yeah, some more cherries. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm pretty happy with this. Looks like she's got a, a nice full head of beautiful fruit hair. Look at those colors. How would you like to have your hair colored that way? Okay, I've glued down the, the cherries and the grapes and the strawberries for the hair. This is looking good. I really like this picture so far. So the, the next thing I wanna do is try to find something that I can put in here for the neck and then finish off the picture with some interesting things to make the shoulders. And then there's always ways that you can get fancy and decorate. I think a pineapple on top of the head would be awesome. I always wanted to have one of those pineapple hats for my head. So I think that would look cool on there. And then I need to come up with some stuff for the neck. Now I have, I'm looking for things that have some lines that I could fill in. So these asparagus work pretty good. And if you can lift up your edge a little bit, you can slide that under. And then maybe add this, add another
asparagus right here and a tomato. Sort of overlap them a little bit, okay? Here's some corn. Oh yeah, that would be kind of cool. So make some space under there for that. Add some corn. And these are start, sort of sliced pineapples, but they're lined up. Would that work? No, I don't think that would work too good. I'm gonna make a different decision on there. Here's a stack of fruit that might look good. Let's try that. So you have to look around in your pile and see what works out best for you. I kind of like this arrangement right here. So I'm gonna glue that down. Okay, well, I'm almost finished with this picture. I'm gonna finish up the rest of the remaining part here that needs to be done. And I need something for the shoulders and something for right here at the front of the neck. So I'm going to probably pick something that has an angle to it. When you look at this, this is easy to fit right in on an angle. You can overlap some shapes. We've talked about overlapping before. If you can lift up one of the pieces, that's fine. If you can't, you can just overlap it on top. And then here's some peaches that might fit good in the middle. So I'm gonna slide that under so you can see how that looks when I overlap these strawberries and this peaches, that beautiful green on top. I've got some cut up zucchinis and some cut up yellow squash. That's a nice contrasting color too. See how that these dark greens and yellows will play off against these light greens? That really makes those colors shine. So I'll turn that away. And then this seems to be cut in a way that would fill in the other side. See how these slices of pineapple sort of form a curve? And that's what I need right here. So I'm gonna lift up this, this asparagus and fit that in to fill in the space. I'm gonna overlap the color on top of that too. So as you can see, this really looks cool. This is one of my favorite things to do with collage. I love working with collages. Collage is where you find different cuttings or different types of material and you put them together to make a design. Akram Baldo actually painted his, but I'm sure if he had stuff like this to work with in his day, he would have done it this way too. Okay, I've gotten the shoulders all glued down and I'm pretty satisfied with the way this is looking so far. So now I want to think about any kind of fancy details I would like to do, or if I need to make some corrections, if I need to cover some white spots, just some things to make my picture perfect. So I'm looking around and I see there's a few white spots here that sort of catch my eye and I don't really want that to be there. So I could take some smaller pieces and blend those in See these nice dark blueberries here really show up these beautiful um, green tomato, green and red tomatoes. And then over here I have a white spot and look how these blueberries just sort of fill that in. And they also complement the blueberries that are over here. So you just look for little things like that that make a, these kind of things make a nice difference in the way your picture turns out. I also was thinking about maybe some really fancy details. How about some jewelry? A couple of dangly earrings here, little half oranges. That would be kind of nice. And that takes up some of the leftover white space, that, which I don't mind having that here. That's sort of the background. So this just completes the back, completes the background and then the, uh, jewelry look there. And I thought it would be kind of cool to add 
some decorations on the hair. Like I could put a pineapple hat, maybe some flowers around it. just to add that last touch of color. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down and see what else needs to be done. All right, I think I'm done. What I did is I added the little accessories, some oranges for earrings, a little flowery, fruity hair decoration, and I filled in some of the white spots that I had down here with some colors that really give a good contrast with each other. I've enjoyed working with this, this uh, portrait inspired by Akron Baldo. I hope you will like it too.